What's up guys? Welcome to today's video. Hope you guys are all having a great Wednesday so far. Today's video is gonna be talking about my monthly expenses and my yearly expenses for all four of my properties. Every single one of these properties is an investment property I actually currently rent where I live. I always talk about the cash flow and how much I'm making on these properties, but I don't think I've made a video on like my monthly expenses averaged out over the entire year. So that's going to be including my CapEx expenses if I ever have any repairs or the repairs that I did this year on any of my properties. So it's gonna be pretty much my uh, my net expenses for 2021 on four of my rental properties. The fourth property, I actually don't have rented out right now, so that's actually the one that's bleeding the most uh, out of my bank account. That one's costing me a ton of money every single month, so I'm gonna break that down as well and kind of give you guys a game plan on what I'm planning on doing with that property because although right now it's costing me the most money, this property I plan on actually having me make the most money. So here we go, another Word document right here. So the first property uh, that I'm gonna be talking about is the student rental. It's still currently a student rental. Uh, it is right now my highest cash flow producing property. Uh, I have tenants in there for all different leases. I think I have most of them for le at least the next nine months on here, which is great because uh, tenant turnover on student rentals are obviously a lot higher because they only really need it for one year. Sometimes I have one girl that's been in here for three years, which is great, but most of the time it's either a six to 12 month lease and then they're out. Luckily, it has been pretty easy to get it re-rented again because it's just word of mouth at this point. Like, hey, I have a, a lot of the times I actually just give uh, the tenants or the students a, like $100, 50 to $100 credit if they can actually find someone to replace them in their room, which a lot of them love that. Um, so this location is in Phoenix, Arizona. I bought it in 2019. It's a 1953 build um, in the zip code for those of you guys that want to like, look up the zip code, 85017. It's not the nicest area. It's definitely um, an older area. It definitely has a high, higher crime rate for sure. Um, and then my mortgage on this property is $908. It actually changed recently. I think it went up like $4 a month because of my insurance and because of property taxes. That's really the only thing that's gonna change your monthly mortgage is if you have a change in your um, taxes on the property or you have your insurance. And I've been fighting my insurance every single year to just try to keep it the same. I do pay utilities on this property, which is just the water bill. And then I have no HOA, which is great. Capital expenses. This year, I've been super, super fortunate with this property. The only thing that I've done to this property, I think I had to replace a door handle because a new tenant or the tenant had lost her key, so I just ended up replacing an entire door handle. Um, and then I also obviously paid the person to go out there to, I didn't wanna go out there myself, so it was, ended up being like a $50 process, the entire thing from the actual door handle itself to the install. And then I ended up buying a fridge light uh, for them because the light went out in the fridge, which was a $4 expense. So uh, the average repairs this year have been about $4 a month on this property. So my monthly average monthly total is $975 a month. That is including that uh, CapEx expense. And then family rental. This is one that I recently converted into a family rental. This is actually like 10 houses down from my first student rental. This was originally a student rental. I just had so many problems internally with the students with the tenants specifically that there was just like not worth the stress the effort and all that and I'm actually making more having a family in there than I was when it, um, from the student rental so it's been really really good the last few months my mortgage is an $872 a month right here uh, I don't pay utilities I don't have HOA and uh, monthly repairs so this one's a little interesting uh, I ended up doing about $3,000 in upgrades when all my students moved out before I had that family move in. So that's kind of what ate up my repairs this year. If I didn't include those upgrades that I did, it would only have been like five or $6 a month. Uh, but I did do quite a bit of upgrades just to get it move-in ready for, my fa for, the, for the family. So hopefully this family will stay in here for at least a couple years. Um, and I'll obviously probably keep rent right around the same amount if they take care of the property and if they're a long-term tenant. I'd rather just not have tenant turnover and keep rents um, around the same. Obviously, I'm going to try to keep it up with the market, but I think my rent right here is really, really good right now. So if they take care of it, I'll take care of them, obviously. That makes my monthly expenses on this property $1,145 a month coming out of my bank account. The third property, I've been renting it to two of my friends for about one and a half years now. I recently raised rent. 
uh, about $400 to just bring it up to market value. The locations in Gilbert, Arizona, <laughs> one of my favorite zip codes in the state is 85295. I actually live in the same zip code uh, as this rental right here. It's about six, seven minute drive from right here. No utilities on this. I do have an HOA at $90 a month. Um, I did do one huge landscape kind of Reno not renovation but just one like kind of big landscape upkeep one month a couple months ago I think it was and that was two hundred and fifty dollars So if I average that out over the year That was the only thing I've done on this property this whole year is about twenty one dollars a month uh, And there are they are month to month. So we'll see if they end up staying or not uh, My total monthly expenses on this property is fourteen hundred and sixteen dollars Finally, the short-term rental, which I haven't really talked about this on this channel much just because there's not a whole lot to talk about until it's actually up and running, but this is planning, I'm, I'm planning on making this an Airbnb from pretty much like a couple weeks after I bought it, I decided to fully commit to an Airbnb situation where I'm gonna have to buy furniture for it. I'm doing a huge renovation on this property, like it's, it's gonna be $75,000 when I'm done with it and it's only an 1800 square foot house So a lot of a lot of work has gone into this a lot more work than what I would ever do on just any Even any flip or any rental property for sure if I were to make this into a, just a normal short or long-term rental property I probably would have spent about half the amount of money. Maybe even less I probably would have spent about 25 to thirty thousand dollars But since this is gonna be a full-time short-term rental, I'm doing like all the expensive stuff on it I'm going above and beyond so it's gonna look incredible, but it's also draining me so much this year. All in right now on this property, about $150,000 with my down payment, and I still haven't done the appliances, which is six grand. I still haven't paid for the furniture, which is gonna be $20,000 flat. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna, it's, it's gonna still be costing me money up until probably the first month of 2022. My mortgage on this is at 3.125%, uh, $1,438 a month. My utilities, Right now, I have lease solar, so I'm paying Tesla $85 a month for the lease. On top of that, I also have to pay for the actual electric bill, which has been really cheap because of the solar panels, but also because I haven't been using the AC at all. So it's only been like 20 to $30 a month in an actual electric bill, and then I have water and trash on there as well, which equates to about $165 a month right now. Uh, I'm the one that's eating all that up every single month. That's essentially holding costs. Luckily, this has no HOA on it, which is the reason why I'm actually converting this into an Airbnb. Um, and then, yeah, my CapEx repairs. I don't really have any repairs on this property. It's mainly every single expense is just renovating this property because I don't have any tenants in it right now. So that's been about $75,000 and I still have more to go, like I said. Making my monthly total, if I were not to include the renovations, it would be about $1,603 a month, which I'm actually using that equation uh, in this video. Or if I were to include uh, the monthly expenses on this property with the renovations, it would be about $7,853 a month. It was char uh, costing me to have this property. Um, so my monthly totals, uh, the expenses on all four of my rental properties right this specific month, every single month is $5,139 a month is coming out of my account, totaling about $61,668 a year. I appreciate you guys watching. I wanted to be as transparent as possible on some of these expenses. I, I've, I've actually felt like I've been pretty fortunate with the amount of repairs and upkeep on all three of my rental properties right now. It's actually been very, very minimal and I'm super grateful for that because I know a lot of people that have these older houses houses specifically uh, just their monthly like repairs and stuff are a lot more part of it is because all my rental properties before my tenants moved in I've actually kind of upgraded them to avoid situations like that where there's certain things that are wrong with the property every single month sorry about that I have people messaging me that's a big thing is if you're proactive in making sure your rental properties are good to go with tenants getting ready to move in then you probably will um, lessen the load on your monthly repairs once they're in there and once tenants are in there it's a lot harder and it can be a lot more expensive to repair things. I am a licensed real estate agent out here in the Arizona area. Uh, if you guys are looking for a rental property, I love to get you guys into your first, second, third investment property out here in the Arizona area. I represented about 98% of my client base this year was uh, all buyers looking for investment properties. So I appreciate that. If you guys are interested, you guys can email me down below. Be sure to drop a like on this video if this video is entertaining or educational, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Be sure to follow me on TikTok, Instagram, and subscribe on YouTube if you guys haven't already.